Hello, creatives. Thank you for joining us today for this month's Designer Talk webinar, Three Things Not to Do When Designing Your Outdoor Project. I'm Linda Abbott, Senior Architectural Design Consultant for Stone Hardscapes. I've been working in the natural stone industry over 20 years and have been doing so with hardscapes in general. I love what I do. And let's get started with today's Designer Talk webinar. As a manufacturer of both natural stone as well as porcelain, there are so many different types of materials to choose from when designing the perfect outdoor and indoor space. We will be focusing on what not to do when achieving your best outdoor design. We'll be diving into the following and addressing the challenges that can arise when we have situations involved with colors and textures, shapes and sizes, and insulation and maintenance. Goal number one, colors and textures. There are a variety of materials that are out there today and selecting the right one for your project can be overwhelming. Do I select a man-made material like concrete or porcelain? Or do I select a natural stone? If I select a natural stone, which type of natural stone will be best? Which material fits into the project's budget? These are all things we need to think of when we're selecting a material, right? So there are thousands of natural stone quarries around the world with the most stunning materials and the most stunning colors from black to white and every color in between. In addition, man-made materials such as porcelain are doing a great job at printing realistic designs and mimicking the look of concrete, marble, and travertine. So rule number one is don't overdo it. With so many options available, materials are in abundance, right? So we wanna keep the color palette at a minimum with a nice flow from interior to exterior for the continuity of color. It doesn't have to be the same exact material from inside to the outside, but it should have some type of flow and not have a hard stopping and starting point. For the exterior design, you would expect the interior to be a modern white and gray color palette. Um, when you're looking at this photo here of the exterior, you would expect something like the photo on the left on the interior. You would not have a Mediterranean style interior design with earth tone colors. You would expect um, that ultra modern white look from inside to outside, like you see here. So this pool deck here has the extreme grit finish on it. Um, and that finish creates an unsurpassed grip um, from the sandblasting of the stone. A leathered finish also has a nice texture to it and would enhance the overall project's design, design if you chose to go that route. <clears throat> Inspiration from my designer talk Exactly one year ago today, Studio McGee brings together organic hues, natural elements, and textiles, all of which are portrayed in this mid-century modern design concept. From the front of the home to the rear, natural elements are strategically placed to cohesively flow. You would not do an ultra-modern exterior like I just showed you with the white marble on a home interior like this. Instead, you would do something like this. Um, if you add the pop of extreme grip cremabella marble pavers into the space, not only will you create texture, but you'll see how easy it is to create a modern twist to this mid-century design concept. The outcome is both breathtaking as well as highly functional. Only a home creates a rustic old world charm using organic materials such as wood and stone on the interior. Carrying the flow of color and style from interior to exterior is easily accomplished with a tumbled travertine paver. The tumbled travertine on the exterior of this home will be most suitable for an inside that looks like this. 
Again, keeping a nice flow from interior spaces to the exterior will create uniformity throughout the project spaces. An exterior that is too contemporary will clash with this type of interior design. When it comes to porcelain, it's important to note that the edges are rectified and don't have a finished nice detail to them. Here, our exclusive Cremabella Extreme Grip Marble was used as coping, while the decking material is porcelain. For the bench seating, porcelain was used. And you can see, if you look closely, that the exposed seam create as nice of a finished look as, say, the marble would have. It was a smart choice to use the natural stone for cope when the client wants a porcelain for the decking portion. Um, because the finished edge of the porcelain just doesn't look as good as the natural stone for coping. Everyone knows that I love natural stone and I love working with natural stone. However, sometimes it can be overbearing in a space. This is an example to me, in my opinion, of too much stone in one area. We don't want to create an indoor cave. Don't you agree? Instead, keeping it simple and only doing one wall in the stone as the focal point adds that sophistication to the space, as you can see here. Textures. Don't use the wrong finish for your exterior project. I always reiterate, re reiterate that. It's extremely important to understand different finishes associated with your stone choice. This is to ensure that the most appropriate finish is specified for the function of the space. When it comes to natural stone, you have honed, polished, honed and filled, brushed, so forth and so on, as you can see here. Interior designers love to use the hone finish for the interior flooring as it creates a beautiful matte finish. They also like to carry the same tile to the exterior, which is in concept makes a lot of sense that flow from inside to outside as we discussed earlier however this is an absolute no-no when it comes to exteriors if a honed finish is used for an application it will create an ice skating rink when it's wet so the solution is to find a complementing exterior paver or tile in the correct stone finish that will create that seamless transition from inside to outside. Don't ever use a coping with a honed or brushed finish. You will slip and fall when you go to step out of the pool. Interiors and exteriors look fabulous when you're combining texture, whether it's changing the finish from flooring to walls or adding texture mosaics to shower walls, it will create a unique eye-catching design concept to the space as you can see here. Texture can be brought in from the to the exteriors by changing the finish. With this award-winning hotel design, the coral stone was manufactured with a split face finish for the walls and caps, while the flooring tile was a saw cut natural finish. Goal number two is to discuss shapes and sizes. Not all shapes and sizes work well everywhere, especially when it comes to selections for coping. Look closely at this coping. A six by 12 was used here when there's no real reason for that size to be used. If you take the ashlar pattern straight to the water's edge without a defined coping, it will actually look, make the deck look larger than it really is. This doesn't look bad. However, don't you think it would look better to have a pattern go to the water's edge and use a 12 by 24 coping size to create longer runs for the coping around the back and the sides of the pool? It's all a matter of opinion here. And I guess I'm not a big fan of the piano key look and prefer to avoid it when possible. I would suggest not using 6x12 for coping unless it's absolutely necessary to do because the pool has a lot of radiuses to it. Here's an example of no defined coping around the pool. 
it tricks the eye because there's no defined coping around the perimeter of the actual pool and it makes the deck look larger. So here they took the ashlar pattern all the way to the water's edge. Here's a close up of that ashlar pattern finish at the water's edge. The installer must use the larger pieces of the ashlar pattern as the coping. Do not use the smaller stones around the perimeter, especially with a pool with radius, because you don't want to end up with smaller pieces or a sliver at the water's edge. It could break off if it's too small, and it needs to make sure that it covers the pool beam width. Here's a great, great way to make the step treads look nicer. Don't use those six by 12 size stones that will create that piano key look. Instead, use a 12 by 24 to give the stair treads a nice long run and appear more elegant and substantial. Goal three, installation and maintenance no-nos. Don't install pavers crate by crate. I always try to tell the landscape architects and architects when the installers are installing the material, instead open up several crates at a time and pull the stone from each crate when installing. This will create a more uniform and blended appearance of the material. You want the darks and lights to be blended nicely with patches of darks and lights blended in with each other so that it doesn't look splotchy. So on the left side, we laid out the ice marble pavers, not blended. The same exact stones are on the right, blended. So you could see here, you could use the same stone and if it's not blended properly, it would make the decking actually not look pretty at all. So we want to make sure that we're opening from several crates at a time when installing the pavers. A good installation will look something like this. When it comes to driveways, for residential properties, we wanna make sure that um, if we're using a one and a quarter inch thick material, that we're not using anything larger than a six by 12 size stone. This is good for non-commercial vehicular traffic, and you wanna follow these guidelines. To reiterate, for a Sanset application on a residential driveway, a one and a quarter inch thick natural stone should not be greater than a six by 12 to avoid any type of cracking. Again, if sand setting natural stone in a driveway that is one and a quarter inch thick, don't use a stone larger than six by 12. If you're mud setting, you may use a larger stone up to 24 by 24 without any issues of cracking with the proper installation methods being followed. Properly installed driveways will look something like this. This is a six by 12 Tahoe marble that was installed. Mud set borders are required. Footers are recommended with sand set pavers being in the field area. Keep in mind with excessive slopes and or radiuses, a mud set application is recommended if, you want in, if you're wanting to use a natural stone. If the budget does not allow for a mud set application, then a thicker natural stone can be used or another material should be considered. As I mentioned in last month's webinar, bleach and water are your best friend for all surface dirt when you have natural stone pavers. For stains, you may need to leave the bleach sit for a few hours and then scrub it a bit um, and then rinse it. Do not use ammonia or acid on natural stone. It will etch and ruin the stone in high concentrations. Care of porcelain. While outdoor porcelain tile, tiles are nearly immune to stains, damage, and water penetration, they still can get damaged with continual, continual exposure to harmful elements such as household spillages like wine and acidic soft drinks. If mist and not cleaned quickly, and even rain if not periodically cleaned, can result in mold and mildew, 
over time. So a little care in the form of quickly cleaning these harmful spillages and periodically cleaning of your outdoor porcelain tiles will prolong the life and the appearance. Do not use coarse scrubbers or steel wool as they can damage the surface. Occasionally wash with warm soapy water. Refrain from applying any product that contains bleach, ammonia, or any cleaners that are acid-based. These may alter the color of your tiles, stain the grout, etc. While porcelain is resistant to scratching and etching and stains, some of the surfaces are not fully damage proof. Take care to avoid any markers or dye. Rinse the area with water as soon as possible, then apply approved cleaning products. Rinse and dry thoroughly. Don't use an oil-based wax cleaner or detergent because that can also ruin the porcelain. No one type of stone is free and clear of maintenance. I want to make sure to get that across. They will all get weeds in a sand set application that will have to get addressed. And they will get dirty and need swept and pressure cleaned every now and again. The goal is to find the best suited material for your project. With so many different options and paving materials, whether man-made or natural, stone hardscapes can help you choose the best materials for your design. We're here to make the specification process easy for you and bring your designs to fruition with both function and beauty. I hope this designer talk was both inspirational as well as informative to you. If you have any questions at all about today's topics or would like to discuss an upcoming project, please don't hesitate to reach out. And I also welcome your feedback and topic suggestions to help you. I appreciate you joining me today for this month's Designer Talk webinar. Webinar, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, stay healthy and stay creative. Thanks so much and have a great day.